Well, earlier this week, Tesla and SpaceX founder Elon Musk unveiled his plan to colonize Mars. Musk estimates that it'll take 40 years to a century to get a self-sustaining colony going there. Time Magazine's editor-at-large, Jeffrey Kluger, joined CBS this morning to discuss if this could actually happen. How is he really going to be able to put this in place? Well, big is the key word here. He envisions beginning with rockets with 26 million pounds of thrust. Now, to put that in perspective, the Saturn V moon rocket, the largest rocket ever built, had seven and a half million. So it's a very big spot, a very big rocket he wants to build. His spacecraft would have room enough for a hundred people in one spacecraft, and he would launch a thousand of, of them at a time, sending a hundred thousand settlers out to Mars, coming back, picking up the next hundred thousand until 40 years have elapsed and he's got a million people what, on the What are the planet. odds, Jeffrey, that peop, some people, those people won't make it? Well, the odds are very, very good. And that's uh, it, the, the mathematics of space travel always say that there must be, and it's a terrible thing to say, there must be casualties because space is hard. So when you're sending a thousand spaceships out there mm -hmm. with a hundred people in each, there have to be fatalities. When you think about it, there are other challenges out there. Once they get there, the process, you've been there. Yeah, well, well a not there, there, a simulated, a simulated version there, of it yes. in Hawaii. But what were some of the challenges for you? Well, the challenges for me, I was there for just 24 hours. This is a wonderful facility called High Seas. It's 8,200 feet up on the slope of Mauna Loa Volcano. And it's basically a simulated Mars facility. That's you we're looking at in that the suit. That is me. <laughs> and believe me, I did not want to give that space suit back. I almost shoved it in the over. <laughs> head on the airplane. So I was there for just 24 hours, but yeah. there is a crew that just left after one year inside, and they live as if they're on Mars. They have a 20-minute light time delay and all of their uh, emails because that's what it would take to get signals back and forth to Earth. They can't go outside without spacesuits, but it's a way of testing crew cohesion and yeah. crew psychology over the term of, of, of a long-term stay. The, phys the crew physicist with you says, if you're claustrophobic, if you don't like people, if you can't adapt to a new environment, if you're a picky eater, you shouldn't do this. <laughs> yes, which is why I was only there for 24 hours because I thought, that's me. That's me. That's me. But so, it's a mental test, right? It, yeah, it's absolutely a mental test. And this is something that I think is important. We just had this terrific experiment with uh, Misha Kornienko and Scott Kelly. Time did yes. uh, our Year in Space series on their Year in Space. And that was mostly about the physiological challenges of being in zero G for a year. Right. This is about the psychic challenges. The human mm. mind is the true black box mystery yes. of long-term space travel. We have no right. idea how it'll affect us. We have no idea how it'll affect us. Now, there is something called ice environments, isolated, uh, confined, and extreme. Yeah. And polar stations are like that. Submarines are like that. But Mars is like that. 40 million miles from Earth. It's yeah. a whole different experience. Yeah, you step outside. Yeah, it's over. It's, it's over. Uh, yeah. Is is colonizing another planet really inevitable? And if not Mars, what's the next viable? Well, here's the thing. I think it is inevitable because we are this idiosyncratic species, and going places is just how we roll. So <laughs> I like that. And I think that's what we do. So I do think inevitably, maybe not in our lifetimes, we will colonize another planet within our solar system, Mars is really it. Mercury is too hot on one side, too cold on the other. Venus is hot enough to melt lead on the surface, so you don't want to be there. Um, and the gas giants don't have any surface to stand on at all. So, you know, it's basically Mars or nothing. Jeffrey, quickly, your one sentence takeaway from spending a day on simulated Mars. I would so go back, but I need better food. And <laughs> I need toilets that flush. <laughs> Jeffrey, <Kluger. laughs> thank you. There's always space ice cream. Toilets, you're on your own.